winters of my youth were long, long seasons. We lived in three places, the school, the church, and the skating rink. <laughs> but our real lives were on the skating rink. Real battles were won on the skating rink. Real leaders appeared on the skating rink. Real strength showed itself on the skating rink. School was a sort of punishment. <laughs> parents always want to punish their children, and school is their most natural way of punishing us. However, it was also a quiet place where we could sit and think about our next hockey game, <laughs> planning out our next strategies. As for the church, there we found the tranquility of God. There we forgot about school and dreamed of our next hockey game. And sometimes in our daydreams it would happen we would recite a prayer. We would ask God to help us play as well as Maurice Richard. <laughs> we all wore the same uniform as he. The red, white and blue of the Montreal Canadiens, the best hockey team in the world. We all wore our hair in the same style as Maurice Richard. <laughs> to keep it in place, we used a sort of uh, uh, glue, huh? <laughs> a great deal of glue. We laced up our skates like Maurice Richard. We taped up our sticks like Maurice Richard. We cut out his picture from all of the papers. Truly, there was nothing we did not know about him. Out on the ice, when the referee blew his whistle and the two teams rushed at the park, we were five Maurice Richards, taking it away from five other Maurice Richards. <laughs> we were ten players, all wearing with the same blazing enthusiasm the red, white, and blue of the Montreal Canadiens. On our backs, we all wore the famous number nine. One day, my sweater became too small. It got torn and had holes in it. My mother said, if you wear that old sweater, people will think we are poor. So, she did as she usually did whenever we needed new clothes. She began to leaf through the pages of the Eaton's catalog that was sent to our house in the mail every year. My mother was proud. She did not want to buy our clothes at the general store. The only thing that was good enough for us were the latest styles from Eaton's catalog. <laughs> but she did not like the order forms in the catalog. They were written in English. She did not understand a word of it. So, to order my sweater, she did as she usually did. She took out a piece of writing paper and with her gentle school teacher's hand, wrote, Cher Monsieur Itain, would you be so kind as to send me a Canadian sweater for my ten-year-old son, who is a bit too tall for his age, <laughs> and Dr. Robert I thinks he's maybe a little too thin. I'm sending you three dollars. Send me anything left. If there is anything left, I hope your wrapping will be better than last time. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Curie then was quick to answer my mother's letter. Two weeks later, our sweater arrived. And on that day, I had one of the greatest disappointments of my life. You could even say, on that day, I experienced a great sorrow. Instead of sending me a red, white, and blue Montreal Canadian sweater, Miss Yar Aten sent me a blue and white sweater with a maple leaf on the front. <laughs> the sweater of the Toronto Maple Leafs? Oh, I had always worn the red, white, and blue Montreal Canadian sweater. All my friends wore the red, white, and blue sweater. No one in our village had ever worn a Toronto sweater. We never even seen a Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. <coughs> Besides, 
the Toronto team was regularly trounced by the triumphant Canadians. And with a tear in my eye, I found the strength to say, I will never wear that uniform. But my boy, first you have to try it on. If you make up your mind about things before you try, you will not be very far in this life. And my mother pulled the sweater over my shoulder. Already my arms are inside the sleeves. She pulled the sweater and began to smooth out the crease on that abominable maple leaf on which, right in the middle of my chest, were the words, Toronto, maple leaves. I wept. I will never wear it. Why not? It fits you like a glove. Maurice Richard will never put it on his back. Well, you're not Maurice Richard. <laughs> Besides, it's not what's on your back that counts. It's what you've got inside your head. Well, you will never put in my head to wear that sweater. <laughs> my mother sighed with despair and explained to me, if you will not wear that sweater, that fits you perfectly well. I will have to write to Monsieur Ritan and explain to him you do not want the Toronto sweater. Monsieur Ritan is an Anglais. He'll be insulted. <laughs> he likes the maple leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and if he's insulted, do you think he'll be in a hurry to answer us? Springtime will come. <laughs> and you will have not played a single game. Oh, because you refuse to wear a perfectly nice blue sweater. So I was obliged to wear a Toronto maple leaf sweater. Out on the ice, all of the other Maurice Richards in red, white, and blue skated over to me to take a look. When the referee blew his whistle, I jumped out on the ice to take my usual position. The captain came and warned me he'd need me later on the forward line. <laughs> A few minutes later, the second line was called. I jumped out of the ice. My sweater weighed on my shoulders like a mountain. But the captain said, oh no, he'd need me later on defense. By the third period, I still had not played. A defenseman was hit in the nose with a stick. It was bleeding. Finally, my chance had come. I jumped out onto the ice. The referee blew his whistle. He gave me a penalty. Oh, he claimed I jumped on the ice when there were already five players. <laughs> that was too much. It was unfair. It was persecution. All because of my Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. I struck my stick on the ice so hard it broke. Relieved, I bent down to pick up the debris. And as I straightened up, I saw the young vicar on the skates before me. My child, just because you wear a new Toronto Maple Leaf sweater, unlike the others, does not mean you make the laws around here. A proper young man does not lose his temper. Take off your skates and go to the church and ask God to forgive you. So, wearing my Toronto Maple Leaf sweater, I went to that church and I prayed to God. I asked Him to send as quickly as possible, moths to eat my Toronto Maple Leaf sweater! <laughs>